This episode of the Off-Road Podcast is sponsored by Warren, Medical Gear Outfitters, and Colby Valve. Off-Road Podcast, episode 356. How to pick a campsite. Tonight, Aaron rides a log, Ben discovers he's a hoarder, and Jeremy, well, he, he just didn't do anything. Welcome to the Off-Road Podcast, a podcast about everything off-road. We cover the news, review products, and interview people in the off-road industry. Your hosts tonight are Jeremy, and my name's Ben, and welcome to the show. Yeah, because no Aaron. Screw that guy. The Week in Review is brought to you by Medical Gear Outfitters. What are you waiting for? Are you waiting to have a casualty on the trail? Check out medicalgearoutfitters.com to get straightened out. Medical Gear Outfitters has everything you need, whether you're going out for the day or traveling on a year-long expedition. Head over there to get off-road specific kits that meet all of your needs. And while you're there, make sure you use Off-Road Podcast for 10% off. Well, yeah, Aaron's having too much fun in uh, in Disneyland right now. Yeah, he uh, he sent me a picture. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to know what he's trying to do there. Uh, if you look closely in his hand, he's I know. Dr. <laughs> <laughs> I know what it is. Uh, so yeah, so yeah. Well, I'm I'm saying for the audio listeners. Yeah. So yeah, Aaron's off in Disneyland land, having fun, and we're here doing life. So uh, since we're talking about life, Jeremy, what's up? Well, I mean. I, I kind of said it all in the uh, intro there. I, I haven't done anything in the off-roading world all all week. It's actually been a while. I need to get out and go go do something. But life's yeah. been pretty busy and hectic. So, yeah, unfortunately, I, that happens. I haven't even driven my Forerunner. I uh, hooked it up to the trailer, and I moved it across the yard. And, um, well, I replaced it with this. I've got a, a, a giant Ford in my yard. Uh, for the listeners, that's a uh, 24-hour dumpster. So, yeah, I've been cleaning, sorting. I have a whole bucket of tools. And now there's a strange man in a bathing suit in our feed. Sorry, I was, I was hey. muting him because his audio was bad. My audio is probably really bad because I'm in a hot tub. Yeah. Oh, that's what that swirling noise was that I was hearing. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. He's got I can the. Hardly hear anything for some reason. It doesn't like broadcast the sound. So. Oh. Looks anyway. like... Well, it sounds like we just need to kick him out then. This is a typical campsite for us uh, Overlanders. It's the Disneyland campsite. Yes, Disneyland campsite. Did you share my picture? Yes, I shared your picture. You want me to reenact it real quick? Sure. No, that's okay. <laughs> all right, I'll tell you all about my overlanding in California next week. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> Peace out, guys. Take care. So, yeah, um, <laughs> I've been cleaning. So, yeah, I've, I found I have like a whole bucket of tools. I found like three 10 millimeter sockets. So, uh, I'm I'm on my path to winning right now. Yeah, three ten millimeters, huh? Yeah. Did you uh, really? Or are you just just uh, making a joke there? No, no. Seriously, I have. I'm like, oh, there's that one. Oh, there's that one. Half well, this just said Ben. Ben's been stealing ten millimeters from everybody. Oh no, I've I've got like seven tool sets, so I'm just trying to get them all back together. <laughs> So, yeah. Yeah, it's good to have a clean garage. Yep. Um that's the goal on um, working on clean garage, clean shed, clean backyard, and then uh we're putting in a shop. So um things have to go in a certain order or they don't get done. So I uh got a rollback dumpster cuz I figure half the stuff I haven't touched for 5 or more years, so if it's not been used or doesn't have a place, it goes in the dumpster. So how wasteful of you. Yeah. Well, could have I, given it away for free or sold it or you, you you know just how throw hard it in the dumpster. Donate stuff right now. Instead, you just throw it in a dumpster. 
Yep. Way, way easier. So, yeah. <laughs> so did you throw your forerunner in that dumpster too? Uh, you know, I tried to park it in there. It wouldn't fit. So I, I, I was literally consider going to park Saw, it in there. Sawzall would fix that. Says, yeah. Well, there's a few things that are going to get the Sawzall. So. <laughs> we'll just cut it. We'll just cut it in half right down the middle. Then you uh, fit both sides in it. <laughs> good, good luck. luck. Good. Why good luck? Because I, sh- <laughs> oh, I was going to say, is that a challenge? Can I come over and just do it? <laughs> well, you can try. I I will bring a lot of sawzall blades if if you give me the okay to cut through your forerunner if if I can. No permission. No permission. Sorry. Okay, then it sounds like Ben, you're going on an all expenses paid trip to somewhere special. It's not going to be that special. It's going to be the cheapest place I can find. <laughs> We also want to thank our sponsor, Patriot Patch. Head over to patriotpatch.co and check out their selection of great patches, shirts, cleaning mats, signs, and stickers. You can also join the Patch of the Month Club for 15 bucks and receive a patch, matching sticker, and artist proof each month. Look, it's an XJ. No. So um, <laughs> here, here's uh, July's Patch of the Month we've got coming up here. Very patriotic, as always. Or wait. No, this is June's. I'm sorry. This yeah. is June's aimed towards the 4th of July. They always do it kind of the month before. That way you get your Everybody 4th has July. it. Everybody has it. So, yeah. And then um, um, we mentioned, we showed last week, this is um, the prototype patch for uh, the Off-Road Podcast Lumen Locker patch. And uh, we have confirmed that it will be glow in the dark. Oh boy. Yep. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that. Um, and all the patches they do. It's nice to actually do a patch with them for us. It's yeah. Only been, it's only been what? Five? It's six. been a while. <laughs> so, yeah. We've been with Patriot Patch from the beginning. So, got to support them. Yeah. And I agree, Eric. Uh, the clearance is terrible with that rocket, but feel like if you need to get over an obstacle, you just shoot that rocket at it, blow it up, and then go on through. Yep. Or just fly over. Or just shoot it at Ben and then go over the obstacle. Yeah, that'll do. Okay. Maybe not Ben, just his forerunner. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a good thing I got a fire extinguisher too, right? I don't know if that's going to help, but okay. <laughs> have, have tire troubles ever left you deflated? Colby Valve has got you covered. Ever have a valve stem leak? Colby Valve makes reusable and easily replaceable valve stems that don't require you to remove your tire from the wheel. They work with your off-road rig, ATV, side-by-side, commuter vehicle, or even your tractor. Never be left stranded again because of a busted valve stem. They also have a tire repair kit for those punctures that keep you away from doing your favorite thing, wheeling. Make sure to check out ColbyValve.com or ask for them at your local off-road product store. So I have an idea for that video. You have your kids videotape you doing it in song. <laughs> how, how about I just put it on a tripod oh. and say my kids did it? Yeah, I did mine with a phone. So yeah. phone is a five-year-old, and he's now 10. So time flies. In it. And it probably wouldn't look any better if you tried to do it again today. Yep. But yeah, I love the Colby valves. Well, but, but first I got to run around and ask everybody if I can slash their valve stem. Please do. Yeah. Everybody yeah. I meet, just like we've, Ben did. We've got my trailer and no one took me up on that. I just had to like go slash my mom's one day. Wow. You're a terrible son. It was no, I did. She's I was like, oh, do you have a Colby valve in your kit, mom? She's like, no. What's it for? I was like, here, let me show you. And I just grabbed my knife and go cut it. From that day forward, her TPMS has never worked again. Oh no, it's it's a ninety-five YJ. TPMS wasn't a thing right back then. And since that day, her tire's been off balance ever ever since. Probably. No, she's got new <laughs> tires now. She's got some Patagucci's. Hmm. Yep. Wonder why. Might be me. Well, our first article here is from Autoblog, and uh, you know. You you might need a tetanus shot. You might not. It hasn't been confirmed yet, but they are bringing back the Scout. Um, Volkswagen owns the Scout name. Um, 
And so Volkswagen actually confirmed the rumor. Um, it's going to be used as a pair of electric off-roaders. And I imagine they mean that by a Scout 1 and a Scout, or the Scout and then the Scout 2 is what they mean by that. I, so, I just hope they don't ruin it. You mean like the Bronco and Bronco 2? No, I mean like the, what was the Chevy one that they did recently after the new Bronco? Chevy Blazer. Trailblazer? Yeah, yeah, the Blazer. Yeah. So They're going to ruin it. I already know they're going to ruin it. So uh, Czech Republic space Skulda um, has used it to don't know as a more rugged four wheel driving version of their Octavia, which is another uh, Volkswagen owned company. Um, if I read the article right uh, since 2006, there's not much more details other than that. Um, we're going to see the return of the Scout. Um, and it's probably going to be like the van that we've been sitting here. If you're, you're a Volkswagen bus fan, Um been waiting for the last five ten years for them to come out with the electric one that they keep teasing and i don't know it, it'll probably be just as great as their uh their diesel cars that they had here that all got recalled so <laughs> i don't know yeah I've got hope i've got hope because they're really working with some good people out there so maybe maybe we'll see something maybe they'll listen to people that off-road and be like hey here's some features that you need and should have um, yeah, probably. Not. I I have very low hopes that it's going to be good. Yeah, yeah. Well, this next next story, and uh, you kind of we hit it a little bit on the tip of the nose with the Trailblazer, um, but GM has more of its users going off road, and this is from the GMAuthority.com. Um, I found this article, and I was just like. Huh. Interesting. So it says that 19% of their tr light truck owners use their vehicle off-road. Um, they're owning that success to the AT4 sub-brands, um, which is funny because those are like their 1500s and all that. Um, I don't think the Colorados fall under that category. <laughs> <laughs> On purpose. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, th but they're saying um, owners with the um, off-road packages are roughly th three times more likely to use those activities for camping and carrying outdoor sports gear. Um, cu customers aren't necessarily looking for the hardcore off-roader like a Jeep or a Wrangler or Ford Bronco. And that's why they bought a Chevy. But, you know, <laughs> um, but customers who say they use their vehicle off-road, 67% of them um, are more are more for the convenience of on-road comfort were also important. So I don't know. It was an interesting article. It's like, oh yeah, I bought this off-road package to go off-road. And are you actually? Yeah. But, but it's kind of a trend we've been seeing more and more is they're like with overlanding becoming this whole big thing and all that. We're seeing more people entering the outdoors especially with COVID and all that. Um, it kind of drove a lot more people to use the outdoors more locally and leave their dirty toilet paper on the ground. So hopefully they get taught better and um, it creates more, more places for us to enjoy the outdoors. Here, here's a pitch. Uh, all new Overland vehicles, Overland vehicles should be sold with the toilet. They should. Yeah. That would that would actually be pretty handy. Well, it it would definitely uh, cut back on all the toilet paper you see out there. Yes. Yeah. Nobody likes your little toilet paper butterflies. No. no nobody does. Yeah, I'm. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. I, I'm I'm surprised it's uh, 19 percent, um, but I have a feeling that 19 percent of people feel like they do off-roading. Um, yeah, I guess I'll just leave it at that. And any, any time you get off-road is good, but yeah. Well, and yeah. they're saying like uh 22% of the, the people that buy the vehicles are looking for the, that off rugged looking vehicle. And I dealt with that working at the shop. It was, you know, they're never going to hit the dirt, but they want an aggressive tire. And so they're like, I want this mud terrain tire. And then they come back complaining that it's loud. I'm like, well, I tried to tell you to at least go with an all terrain. So that, you mean that's 
the the people that go with a you know 33 inch tire wrapped on a 20 inch rim yes same people yeah yeah i'm like you, you'll get more comfort if you have a smaller rim but you know sidewall flex i don't know anything though go prepared with warren industries they produced the first recreational winch in 1959 and lead the industry with their dedication to quality and reliability when you dig yourself in deep make sure you have the right tools to get yourself out get worn equipped and go where others can't now let's get ready for adventure and head into our main topic Well, as you guessed from the subject of the uh, episode, how to pick a campsite, that's what we're covering tonight. And uh, I don't know if we consider Jeremy and I subject matter experts because of how we find campsites. Screw it. We're camping right here. <laughs> that's what it often feels like. Yeah. Every time we go out together, right? If we're camping. That yep. was what? Wobder and a couple of the snow trips. Okay. This will work. This yes. Is to do. And that's the last resort. I mean, yeah. you got to find a place to sleep. So, so we're going to we're going to take this the smart way around instead of using that method. Well, but we'll even cover how what you should be looking for during that method. But um let's kind of talk about how we find those spots. So, um Jeremy, do you want to lead us off or should I lead us lead us off? Sure. I I mean if if this so just kicking it off. I mean, if this is an area that you go pretty regularly, you know, the best, the best way to find campsites to camp at next time is just by scouting them out. Um, just driving around, pulling into every spot you can find and just seeing how that, how that spot looks and kind of what it would be good for. Um, I've, I've, I'm actually planning on doing that. Um, at the end of this month, with my dad, we're going to go out and we're going to pick some spots um to go and check out for camp spots um yeah we're going father's day weekend um and that could be it's after memorial day so more people are outside because apparently camping seasonal well don't forget that that's a uh holiday weekend this year for uh for juneteenth so yeah so there might even, be even more people out i'll just scare them with my redneckness <laughs> Uh, another good way to do it is uh, by either looking at paper maps or looking at satellite image, you know, Google Maps or uh, <laughs> or Google Google Earth, and just uh, just kind of looking at it and and seeing if you think that it's going to be a good spot. Um, you kind of start to get a somewhat of a a gut feeling on things um, after you've looked at enough of them and and gone and actually looked at them in person. You can kind of start to pick out what actually makes a good campsite and your success rate starts to go up a little bit yeah it's definitely a good precursor before you're out scouting them out it's it really helps be like okay i've got this many people or it's just me how big of a spot do i need where do i want to play that type of thing it helps yeah um i think my least favorite ways are next but why don't you cover those spots. yeah so you'll see a lot of those out there as geotag spots and they're not necessarily a bad thing in the sense well, of camping spots but where they become yeah. a bad thing is they're popular and overused and as air and i are very familiar with abuse extremely yes. abused uh one of his favorite camping spots is the uh his son calls it the the trash camp and had people not been destroying it it'd be absolutely go gorgeous spot um with owls with bronchitis there though yeah i mean i we've uh we've found a lot of those spots over the years uh one of the most recent ones we went camping up in the olympics and there's kind of a it's a pretty well-known river area where there's kind of four four campsites right on the river in a very close proximity um and just like barely off the campsite there was just a pile of you know used toilet paper and stuff like that so um it's usually a little bit better if you can find your way out to where nobody is um 
and that makes things a little bit better. The ironic thing is it, there's literally like a, a hiking trailhead like 100 yards away with a pit toilet. And so I, I just don't understand people sometimes, but. Um, I, it could be, I don't know if this was around COVID. The, the pit toilet might've been locked because the government decided that you're not safe going to the bathroom in a pit toilet in the middle of the woods. But, so but still, gonna... still just burying it. after yourself. Yeah. yeah, no, no. You should always yeah. clean up. In some way or shape or form. Yeah. yeah. Yep. 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 Um, I overlander app. Um, I haven't used this one I at all. I've tried once before. Um, it was a long time ago. And I believe they have got like a bunch of recommended camping spots that other people say, hey, this is a good spot. Kind of falls under that geotag spot. But it kind of will vary. Um, this next one's uh, asking in Facebook groups uh, for areas you're interested in. And, and that's it's kind of a double-edged sword. Uh, again, that's one of those I would suggest going and tracking them out. Checking You're going to get a lot of hate. <laughs> You're going to get a lot of hate. Um, it kind of falls under that whole geotagging thing. People don't want to share their secret spots. <laughs> people don't want their secret spots. Real. Yeah. <clears throat> and now we're kind of getting into ones that are a little bit slightly better. Um, <clears throat> the, the first one is look for some books. So some, some books, they have some camping books uh, where they give you a lot of free campsites. Um, I, I know Aaron has one that he really likes. Um, I've got one as well. And that, that's a little bit better because, you know, now that everybody has the internet, you know, nobody seems to read books anymore. Uh, so some of those sites have kind of become, you know, I guess undiscovered, I would say, but not really undiscovered, just undiscovered by the, uh, by the internet crowd. So they are kind of a uh, little bit more, more niche, N not niche, but, you know, just they're, they're a little bit more secretive, less yeah. known. Yeah. Um, and then th this last one's a good one, you know, just ask your buddies that you off road with, you know, usually they'll, they'll be fine giving, giving up a campsite to a buddy. Um, they just normally say, well, don't tell anybody about this one, but here you go. Yeah. And, and, and the big thing with that is, especially if you're traveling out of state and you've got friends in those other states, that those are the people to ask is you know a local so yep absolutely so uh our next thing's uh talking about location and uh the, some of you might not know this uh but mountains get colder um and they stay cooler in the summer um but there's a big con with that is some of the wind you get up there um the higher you get up the where the tree, trees get thinner um you get really windy and it's not as fun. Yeah, and and you also have to think about snow in the winter time, um, or in the spring, even or in the springtime, or in the fall. Yeah, I mean, if you're not prepared to be in the snow, you you definitely have to, you know, just because it's ninety degrees at your house doesn't mean that it's going to be ninety degrees where you're camping at night. Yeah, um, rivers they're definitely cooler in the summer. Um, they can be loud, and they can also be very popular. So. Uh, get yeah. there early um don't yeah. try and, I, I generally suggest not trying to go find that cool camp river camping spot on a saturday you might get lucky um or you might get very unlucky yeah we actually pulled up to we were doing a trip um through idaho um and we we found a really awesome river campsite and we kind of parked set up camp uh got everything ready to go and then my wife and i were sitting there on, in our chairs you know just watching the river go by and then it was like you could kind of start feeling your ears start to hurt a little bit it's like i think this spot's too loud and so we actually ended up having to move move sites that that day um just because it it just seemed like it was just a little bit too loud like uh yeah it was just uncomfortably loud too too much white noise for you yeah so you got to be careful about that with some some of the river spots especially in the mountains um just because if there's you know any, any sort of waterfall type stuff it could maybe be a little bit too loud to be comfortable but yep 
the next spot here is the desert and uh th that's one of those ones where there's no shade there's uh some great stars um some amazing stars but the pro one of the problems when you're in like the desert or a plateau is uh the wind um we were talking about that with uh i think it was koi and nathan when we did our uh uh nevada trip um they were talking about camping out on the playa and people just flying through there in the middle of the night so you also gotta kind of keep some lights around your camp um so you don't have people driving through your tent in the middle of the night well that would be terrible yeah yeah yeah, I, you know, desert camping is, or plains or whatever you want to call it, uh, is kind of some of the camping that I haven't done as much of that I would like to do more of, I think. Um, I mean, kind of the only time that, the only big trip that we did one on was that Christmas Alley trip is the, pretty much the only one I can think of. But even then we were kind of in a little patch of trees. Yeah. Aaron, Aaron's making fun of you for the sound of the river. It was too loud, Aaron. And and I don't know anything about wetting your bed because of the sound of the river. So we'll have to ask you about that story when you come back on next week. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and there's the high desert, which is definitely going to be not as popular. And Oregon has some amazing high desert um, views. So um and forest um you're definitely protected from the wind you've got lots of tra trees um you're gonna have some um problems with um deadfalls bugs lots of bugs generally in the forest uh stuff like mosquitoes um but you know it's all good with that so yeah um uh Another spot is by by the ocean, but there's not much uh, ocean side camping, and that's a little bit different. So uh, let's talk about your setup. What do you need? You definitely uh, do. You need it to be flat. Um, I mean, most of the time. Now to find flat. Yeah, and, and and that is that is kind of the thing. Do you um, if you're in a, a rooftop tent. Um, your vehicle just needs to be level, not so as bad. Jeremy, I think your microphone's on your computer mic. Um, if you're, you're in a just ground, figuring this out now, I I I am just figuring this out now. Son of a gun, you're right. <laughs> so, um, how's that? Is that better? Yeah, it's it's better. You're a little quieter, but it's better. Um, you've got your um, ground tents, which you definitely do want it flatter. Um, you've got to watch out for rocks and all that fun stuff on the ground. So you got to sweep up the ground around your tent. Um, if you're snow camping, you've got to be uh, um, kind of get an idea of what's underneath you. You got to flatten it out. Um, a hammock, you definitely need some trees in between you um, or some ways to tie it off unless you're really cool and you've got... Uh, one of those hammock hitch mounted setups, which I've yeah. always wanted to try. Seems like just too big. Um, yeah. But an, kind of another thing to think about when, um, and this is kind of more specific to rooftop tents, but um, if you're going, especially if you're kind of going on a long trip, um, you might have to give up on a really awesome campsite uh, if you have a rooftop tent because maybe you can't get your vehicle down into. So um, we were out camping in the Olympic mountains one time. And I, this was when we had the rooftop tent, but I think we had just brought a ground tent just in case. Um, and we ended up, uh, we ended up finding this really awesome river spot with a really cool, it was kind of had its own little offshoot little pool on the river. Um, and it was nice and deep for swimming. Um, and then it also had a really awesome, uh, fire ring that had been built up to like probably about three feet tall um with rock um so it was it was just a really awesome site but you had to walk down in there so we couldn't take the rooftop we couldn't sleep in the rooftop tent 
Um, so we, thankfully we had that ground tent or maybe we just had hammocks. I can't remember which, but, um, we ended up just hiking in and, and camping there for the night. So that rooftop, the rooftop tents are really comfortable, but, um, sometimes you're going to run into some limitations, uh, and you might have to pass up on a really good spot just because you can't get it down in there. Yeah. Oh, and we we ran across the problem for a ground tent with that when we were up on, um, um, what's that called uh on the backcountry discovery route where we camped the first night um um god i'm spacing on the name now bethel ridge so uh what the spot with like the amazing view in bethel ridge the problem with it is is you are there's like giant rocks there covering the ground it's just all really hard rock and there's no way that would be comfortable to sleep on all I'm hearing is you held me back, man. Yeah, I held you back a lot. Jumped my truck, blew a tire, all for you, buddy. <laughs> so yeah, it, it, in the same thing can be done with hammocks is there's no trees around, so you can't throw up a hammock. Um, you might be able to throw one between two rigs with roof racks, but it kind of varies. And then um, one of the last problems is is how big of a group you have. If you have too big of a group, um, you're not going to be able to fit in that spot. And if you've got a small group, you might have other people uh, coming, running in and getting close to your camp spot where you're not comfortable with that. Yeah, and that's also the problem with having too too nice of a location is you might have that problem as well. Yeah. Yep. Well, you've got two two different styles of camping nowadays. You've got the numbered campsites. Um, they can sometimes be reserved a year in advance. And, and you've more got, popular ones, you definitely want to uh, try to reserve them as early as possible. Yeah, there's, uh, what is it, Lake Diablo here in Washington. Um, it's up north. That that spot's one of those lakes. It, it reserves out like a year in advance. Yeah. Um, it's really nice camping a beautiful lake um but you ain't gonna get out um you're, you're gonna have a hard time getting there so in that numbered campsite would you consider like uh camping up at a fire lookout a numbered campsite i probably would include it <sighs> yes no no you you because some of those it, it depends so like you've got some fire lookouts here in washington some um, decommissioned ones that are still open to the public that you can camp in, um, but they um, they're not reserved. Um, I would consider that were reserved. Uh, there's a few around here that you actually have to hike up to. Um, they're not reserved. Um, the but you I, have to. The only ones I'm thinking of are the ones that are drive-in. Oh yeah, and those those probably are reserved or or for first come first serve. But um, and that kind of brings us on to the other one is the uh, dispersed camping, which uh, I'm always a fan of. Um, that's my favorite kind of camping. I do like numbered campsites um, because there's a lot more stuff for my kids. But when it comes to me and my preferences, I prefer di dispersed because uh, you guys can go bang rocks together, you little crotch goblins. Also, you don't um, have to uh with other people yeah yeah you definitely you can get out there far enough you don't have to pay for it you can get out there um it's free it's uh you don't have a you can be away from other campers and yeah. uh but also, uh, go ahead if you look in the off season some campgrounds stay open but they don't have any services uh but they're also free at that point and they're usually are almost nobody there yeah and and there's been some times we've uh the nevada trip we used um a number ish campsite and they had um they had a, a heated uh not heated geothermally warmed pond to swim in so i mean there's some pros to stuff like that yeah there can be pros and not you know, like with our Christmas Valley trip, we also stayed at a numbered campsite and it wasn't so bad. Although we took up like more than half the campground, but still. 
hey, that, that's how it works sometimes, right? Yeah. Get a big enough group. Yep. Um, and then uh, you do have to observe some uh, dispersed camping rules uh, when you're out, out there camping. Obviously, you don't want to be leaving your trash. Well, any of these camping spots, you don't want to be leaving your trash. That's That should be a given. Um, if there's toilets available, use them. If not, um, depending upon where you are, you either have to pack it out um, or bury it. Um, it depends upon what the rules are for the area. Um, the and camping are pretty rare. There's a few spots. It's mostly like national park, state park style stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think here. Um, camping is free on BLM land. Do remember that. Um, that's always a great source to uh, be researching. Just make sure you have your forest passes and stuff. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever your state or local forest requires. Yeah, and there will be stuff like you have to stay, like Aaron just actually said here, is uh, you got to stay a certain distance from the road as well. Um, you can't be parked in the middle of the road camping. You actually have to park off to the um, um, off to the side. Well, I, he means you can't go certain distance off the road, not necessarily. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean... Yes, there, there's a, a handful of things involved with that. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, should we talk about some of these awesome amenities that you might find? Yeah. I mean, sure. <laughs> I uh, You missed one in there. So the, the first one, I think, I think the one that I'm kind of the most uh, interested in in the campsite is a view. Oh, yes. A good Whether view. Yeah. A view of you know like an overlook or a nice view of the river or what whatever it is uh views are are kind of one of the top top thing for me well and it really does make the campsite i mean like our snow camping trip the first year we went out aaron you and i as a group um aaron yeah the first year we did the camping site aaron you and i oh oh <laughs> when we camped by the river yeah. like that was a lot nicer view than the other spots we've been up to mm -hmm. but the view kind of makes it and kind of adds to the om omniance of the area being a nice open area an open space is always nice um gives you a lot more room for activities yep um having some trees around i i, I love having trees around um be it just to hang something off of um give me a little extra shade um though i have had the problem of having too many trees and not enough open space to where i couldn't use my solar charger it's kind of uh you know it kind of sucks when you your fan runs out of battery on a 90 degree night so um but having water to play in is definitely a big plus yeah although it can be a negative too uh, the first time we tried to go camping with our two year old, we were setting up camp and, uh, and she's probably like one, and, one and a half or something at the time, but she almost immediately went and face planted into the river. Um, and then she got really wet. So just be aware, you know, water, water and kids don't always mix. Um, yeah, that's why your kids need leashes. People put the crotch goblins on leashes. No, you don't need to do that. <laughs> no, no. So, so that's that's actually something we do in our actually something to talk about here is activities for kids. Is uh when we go camping, I've got a bunch of walk FRS radios. I give them to the kids to kind of keep an eye on them. Um, that way they can range a little bit and then they don't go as close to the water if they can go in the woods a little more. Um, if you're camp if you're camped out by the river. We camp by um, one of the spots we camp out uh, late on one of the lakes. There's like a lake bed with big river rocks in it where the river gets bigger during the summer. Actually, we got flooded out one year. Um, is um, there's like a secondary river that goes into it, it's a lot smaller, a lot slower, so the kids can go splash in it because it's only about six inches to a foot deep right there, and therefore it's like not as bad. And my kids are also older, so if they get wet, they can change their own clothes. Can they? Not not very well. 
Teddy's constantly putting his pants on backwards. So, yeah. Yeah. Should we uh, talk about the tips for finding the best spots? Yeah. I mean, kind of the number one, uh, for an, especially for an area you haven't been to before, is uh, when you're looking on like Google Maps or, or paper maps, pick out way more than you ever think you're going to need because uh, chances are most of them aren't going to pan out. Um, they might look good on a map and then you get out there and then there's absolutely no way that, that that's going to work for camping. Um, or somebody's there. Or somebody's there. Yeah. Um, when you're, or, or the area is completely trashed or whatever. Um, when, when you're driving around looking for campsites, slow down because you might miss something. Um, I know I've probably missed a lot of campsites by going too fast. Uh, so just make sure you're, you're slowing down and you're looking everywhere. Um, and kind of, kind of going along with the looking everywhere, uh, make sure you're, you're going down every side road that you think there might be a, a decent campsite on. So, um, you're going to get shut out a lot, but it's much better to, uh, find that gem than it is to, uh, to not find the gem. So kind of what I'm thinking about is on our Wobder trip when we were, when we kind of met up with that group and we ended up camping kind of with them. Um, and then in the morning you were kind of walking around and you found a really good campsite, just like probably 200 yards away, um, up that hill. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, that would have been a really good spot to camp. Yeah. Next time. Cause we've still got to finish it. We do eventually. One of these days. Bring yeah. yourself. When when it's uh when it's crowded out there, you might want to take the roads that are, are less traversed. So uh maybe you want to go down that road that's severely overgrown because chances are not a lot not a lot of people want to uh go down that road, especially if they care about their paint job. Well, and that was actually how we um in Nevada when we were at um in the Steens mountain loop, there was a spot we were going to camp at like this paid camping spot. And it would have been with as many vehicles as we had. Cause we were meeting up with uh, Nathan. I want to say there was like six or eight vehicles. Um, instead of camping there, we went and explored around a little bit. And I believe it's Koi, Koi's and Aaron's wife found us another spot. And it was down by a little creek, um, nice and open, good spot to camp, and it was free. Yeah. And it fit all of us. So don't be afraid to hit those side roads. Really don't be afraid. Um, yeah. You don't have to settle for camp. Screw it. I'm camping here. You <laughs> can just explore a little. Though, I mean, sometimes you have to settle, especially if you're if it's getting dark. Yeah. Which kind of leads us to our next point. Be flexible. Uh, even if that means you're stopping a little bit early or uh, driving a little extra late. So uh, my wife and I were on a trip one time and uh, to her, having a really nice campsite is kind of 98% of, of going out and camping. You know, that's, that's the type of thing she really likes. And um, there was one day where we didn't have you know, huge mileage goals or anything like that. And I think we stopped by like 10 AM uh, nice. we to start the next, that, that morning. And uh, we found a really awesome campsite right on a river. Um, and we, we just decided, well, this, this spot's amazing. Let's go ahead and camp here for the night. And that was that we spent the whole day at just piddling around camp. Yep. Uh, Aaron brings up a really good point with the uh, paid camping spot is uh, don't forget to bring some cash and small bills to pay for a site if necessary, um, because they don't give you change most of the time, especially if it's uh, you pay by your self-service um, camping spots. Um, you don't want to be caught camping illegally and get fined. Um, or paying $100 because so. that's the only bill you have. Or paying a hundred dollars because that's all you have. So um, keep keep a small wad of some small small dollar bills, and uh, most of those sites are under thirty dollars. So have like thirty bucks in small bills, and you should be good. Indeed. Um, to do mark up on a map sites you have found. Um, 
this is where Gaia really comes in handy. Any camping spot I go to, I mark it. And when I uh, mark that I've been here and I camped here, and then I kind of will go back if I'm going to be camping in that area and I'll be like, oh, I camped there. And this is when it was, if I don't exactly remember when I was there, and I'm like, oh, I camped there then and I had a really good time. Or, oh, nope, that was a garbage camp. Don't want to go back there. Or, hey, this is where an alb had bronchitis at, so I'm not sure I want to camp in that spot again. And it's not even just the ones that you've camped in, but if you come across a really good campsite uh, while you're driving, you know, go ahead and mark it. Oh, I've actually, and yeah, I've, I've got a good chunk of those marked down um, up above uh, Wilkeson near me. Uh, from doing a search and rescue mission we we're out there looking for a guy and i'm like oh this is a good spot oh this is a good spot this is a good spot doesn't look like someone's camped here recently but this looks like a pretty decent spot so i've got eight or nine spots marked out up there so the next time i go up there to go camping i know not to go camp by the lake with the ridge where the wind's blowing really hard and will blow in my tent and bend my awning because that sucks be wary of the wind. <laughs> um, one more thing. If you're looking on Google Maps or on paper maps for uh, nice river campsites and you're in pretty steep mountains, uh, be wary of uh, rivers that might end up being seasonal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, seasonal. Uh, if, if there's no winter runoff going on right then and there. Um, it's going to be a dry lake bed or dry river bed, and uh, you're not going to get that nice water that you want. Yeah. Well, and, and this this has bit my wife a lot of times when she's been looking for campsites for us. Uh, the, the be wary of, of any body of water that doesn't have a name. <laughs> yeah. It means it's, it's seasonal. And also with those, with a lot of those seasonal rivers, they're usually... Um, especially when they're in the mountains, uh, there's not usually a spot where you can actually pull off on them because it's usually on some sort of a shelf road. Um, yeah. It's kind of cutting underneath a shelf road. And this is something that I've actually kind of dealt with um, is flash floods in the desert. Um, so like if you're near like a river spot in the desert because there's shade, um, you do have to be wary of flash floods. And even if like you're camping on a riverbed like I have, um, there may might not be rain where I'm camping at, but if there's some in the mountains, it's going to flood the, um, I've got a picture on my phone, um, that Pete sent me, we were camping at a spot and we got a flash flood warning and then the wind came and we were like, okay, yep, let's bug out. He went back a week later and that spot was under six feet of water. So, uh, do be wary of that. Indeed. So, yeah, I think that about wraps up this episode. It was kind of a short one compared to our long-winded other ones, but we also got through the start of the show pretty quick with just you doing nothing. Yeah. But, I mean, if, if you guys think we missed something, like write, write us in and, uh, and let us know, and we'll, uh, we'll bring it up on later episodes if you, if you think we missed some good tips uh, that you want other people to, to hear. You know, just shoot us a message and, and – uh, yeah, listener feedback is rewarded. You know, you, you do, you do get stickers for listener feedback. So if we use as, it, as as Ben mentioned, you know, we don't necessarily consider ourselves complete uh, subject matter experts, but um, you know, we we uh, we try to share our experiences and um, and and just try to try to have a, con a good conversation. Yeah, yeah definitely can always learn something every day and with that thanks to everyone who listens to us weekly and those who watch us live on youtube we really do appreciate that um our chat's been pretty good this week uh cannot complain at all and uh share us with our friends help us grow your friends not our friends our friends already know about us we share it so much with them they're probably tired of it but maybe they'll share it finally and then your friends will share it too and then we can grow and share more good things with other people and uh god bless america and uh have a have a good week don't forget to visit patriot patch and join the patch of the month club check out our gaia affiliate link for up to 40 percent off 
Also, don't forget to head over to Warren Medical Gear Outfitters and Kobe Valve to see all their great gear. We are a proud part of the Firearms Radio Network. Got a comment or question? Send it to us through our webpage at firearmsradio.net or through our social media channels by searching for Off-Road Podcast. Also, you can listen to us live at overlandradio.com Mondays at 7 p.m. Pacific. When off-road, please remember to have fun, tread lightly, be safe, and courteous. Thanks for listening. All right, screw it.